Hi everyone, welcome back. In this lecture, we'll code and learn about the grace period in Kafka streams and how it's connected to the windowing concept in Kafka streams. Let me start with some theory first and then we will get to the coding part. Data delays are a common concern in streaming applications. So the delay in event could be because the app that's producing the event is down or in the worst case scenario, the Kafka broker could also be down. In both of these scenarios, there is a possibility to experience a data delay. Let me show you an example of what a data delay means in the first place. So here is a representation of two one minute windows. The first window starts from 8 a.m. and ends at 8.01 a.m. And the second window starts from 8.01 a.m. and 8.02 a.m. So let's assume that we have few events received in these times. One at 8 a.m. 44 second. Another one is at 8 a.m. and 54 second for the first window. And for the second window, we have another event at 8.01 a.m at fifth second. Now what we are going to get is a delayed event. If you take a look at this event, this event's timestamp is 8 a.m. and 58th second, which means this event is supposed to come in the first window because the first window's timestamp ends at 8.01 a.m. But for some reason, this event got delayed from the app that's producing it and it, and it reached the Kafka cluster with some delay. So in these kind of scenarios, the common behavior is to ignore these events and then move on to process the next event. And this is how the windowing concept works in Kafka streams. Let's say if you want to still consider this event into the appropriate window. So in this case, this is supposed to be part of the 8 a.m. to 8.01 a.m. time window, right? If you want to have a behavior like this, so this is where the grace period comes into rescue. Let me quickly show you how to define a grace period and then how it impacts the overall windowing logic. So this is how we define a grace period. In this case, you have the actual window size and followed by the grace window size and use the function name time windows dot of size and grace and you pass these two windows as part of that actual call. And what this means is that so in this case, let's say the next event, the delayed event comes within the 15 second window, right? So in this case, the 15 second window is a grace window size. If you receive a delayed event within the 15 second window, then that event will be considered into the actual window that it needs to be part of. So this is how the grace period works. I hope the explanation is clear. Now let's go ahead and explore this using a simple example. So I'm going to go back to IntelliJ and in the IntelliJ what we are going to do is we are going to go to the topology just to make sure we are able to test this easily. What I'm going to do, I'm going to be navigating to the function aggregate orders count by windows and in here I'm going to define the actual window size to be 60 seconds which is actually one minute and then the next thing is I'm going to be creating a grace window size. In this case, it's going to be grace window size. And then let's give the value as 15 seconds. So in this case, we are going to use the function as of size and grace. And then I'm going to pass the grace window size over here. There you go. So we have the grace window size passed to this one. So what this means is that any delayed event, if it falls within the 15 second time window in the following window, then this will be considered to be part of the actual window that it is supposed to be part of. Okay, so now with this code, what I'm going to do, I'm going to restart the application. But before I do this, what I'm going to do, I'm going to restart my whole Kafka cluster. So in this case, I'm going to go to the Kafka cluster. As you can see, I brought this down already just to save some time. All you got to do is run the Docker compose down command that should take care of bringing the application down. The next thing what I'm going to do, I'm going to call Docker compose up. This should bring our application up. Once this is up, what we can do is we can go ahead and bring our Kafka streams application. I'm going to pause the video for a bit. There you go, the Kafka cluster is up. Now what we will do, we'll go back to the application. So in this case, let's go back to the Kafka streams application and then start this one. So in this case, I'm going to go to the orders management stream application and then start this one. So this should take care of starting up the application in our local. There you go, the application is up and running. Let's go ahead and search for the running text. There you go, the application is ready. Before I go ahead and start testing this, because we need to go to the producer, I've added some test data into our orders mark data producer, which means I've added some functions that's going to help test this behavior. So now if you go and take a look at it, you'll see the section where just above the publish orders to test grace. So what we need to do in order to test this grace period is that we are going to follow the instructions that are given over here. Number one is we are going to be executing the publish order function. So which is basically this one. Okay. And during that time, we need to have this one commented out. Okay. What we are going to do, we are going to have the data published in a certain window, right? So our window topology, if you go and take a look at it for the count, it is 60 seconds now. 
what I'm going to do, I'm going to start publishing the data in the start of the window. In this case, it could be starting from the 0, 01 second. Okay, so I'm going to publish some data. And then I'm going to wait until the actual time goes to the next window. In this case, the following window is going to be the next 60 second window. So if you go to the artist mark data producer, and if you go to the build artist disgrace function, so in this function, what I'm going to do, I'm going to hard code the actual timestamps over here. Okay, so that's what I'm going to do. So we need to match the times in our local machine so that it will be easy to test. So in this case, what I'm going to do, I'm going to use this time utility. And as you can see, the time currently is 842. So I'm going to have this test run at 845. So in this case, this window time frame is going to be 845, 58. So let me give that value all over the place. 845, 40, 58. 845 58 and 845 58. So this function I will execute at the 8. I forgot to change this time to 8. It was still pointing to 5 a.m. So let me change it to 8. Let me change this to 8. What we are going to do is at the 845th minute, so I'm going to start publishing the data, but during the time frame, I won't be invoking any call to this function. So in this case, this function is going to be commented out. So in this case, at 845, regular windows are going to be created. So the build orders, as you can see, it is just going to publish one order for each store with the type one type as general, another one is going to be restaurant. And in the next 846th minute, I'm going to be calling this function. Okay, let's go to the top. So for now, have this commented out. We'll wait until this time becomes 845. Because if we go and take a look at the build orders to grace function, this function is going to hold the 845.58 timestamp, but this is going to go at the 846th minute actually. So at the 846th minute, we are going to publish this, but we need to publish this before the 846.15 seconds. So I'm going to wait until this becomes 845.00 and then launch this orders mark data producer. And to test this out, what we can do, we can use the curl commands that we have over here. So in this case, if we go here, we can open the curl commands. So in here, all we got to do is invoke this orders. Okay, the time is at 8.45, a little over 8.45, we can start publishing this. If we go and execute this, this is going to take care of publishing the data and our windowing logic is going to happen in our case. If you go to the streaming application logs, so you might have received all these events. And now if you hit the curl commands endpoint, so in this case, this is our endpoint. So we have built this endpoint, which is orders windows count. If you press enter, you should be able to see some data over here. So in this case, we have the windows created for 845 and 846, and you can see each and every order count is one over here. Okay, so I'll wait until this becomes 846, and then I'm going to publish orders for both of these windows. So this is going to publish with the timestamp of 846, but this one is going to have the timestamp as 845.58. So we'll wait until this goes a little over 840, six and then we'll publish this one so currently the order count is one as you can see so now i'm going to publish this one so currently we just have one window so once this is published so all the records are published before the 15 second now if i hit the endpoint so let's go ahead and hit the endpoint you will see the order count value updated to two so in this case so for this particular window let's copy this one right so for this window the order count was one and then we published this grace function, which is going to hold the timestamp as 845.58, right, which is before window. The question is, did it update the order count or not? If we go a little bit down, the order count got updated to two. So basically the order count was one. And even though we published an event with the delay, which went in the next window, which, which is 846, which is local time, but in reality it is 1446. So there are windows created for that one. but. The key thing is we were able to get the updated value of this order count. So in this case, the order count is updated to for all the events, even though we had a data delay. So this is only possible because we have added the grace period over here. Okay. So now what I'm going to do, I'm going to still publish more data, but you will notice a different logger in the console because this record that we are going to publish with the grace period, that's going to be way older, right? Which is actually way older than the 15 second grace period that we have provided. So in this case, let's go ahead and execute this function one more time. In the logger, you will notice the records are being skipped. So if you go to the orders management stream application, you can see we have a lot of records that are skipped because they are outside the, which means the data is delayed beyond the grace period that we have provided. So we have a lot of records that are ignored. 
So this is a clear signal. Grace period only considers the record with a delay timestamp if it's just within the 15 second. Even though we pass the timestamp as two second before because that's a delay, right? It can go until the 15 second. That should still be considered for the actual time window. I hope you all understood the effect of a grace period and how it works in action. This marks the end of this lecture. Thank you for watching.